Let's -a go. Hey guys, what's going on? It's the Ninja Reviewer here once again. Welcome everybody to another exciting edition episode of Assassination Classroom Second Season Episode Two Review. Now, this episode is actually very simple. They kind of actually split this into like two different like stories, as you could say. The first one being about um, what the hell is her name? Hold on. So basically, the first half of this episode is basically just comedy based like well comedy based sort of well kind of in a way well the first half pretty much being um well yeah well it combines two things but the other half is pretty much a whole different story segment as a whole the first is the students get around to make this giant ass delicious looking pudding and well, okay, 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 I was gonna make the Bill Cosby joke about you know Joe Putin. Like I, I can't do that because a lot of people say, "Oh, that joke's offensive because of what happened and he's going to jail and shit." And I'm like, "Oh yeah, I know, I know, I know. I know the whole Bill Cosby being arrested thing. I know." And, and I was, and I was trying to hold myself back from making the Jello pudding joke. Like I wanted to, but <laughs> fuck it, I, 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 I had to at least try though. Anyways, so. The first half of the episode, well, like I mentioned, the giant pudding they built. And it's not just any other giant pudding. It actually has a bomb implanted inside it. But, of course, it doesn't really work out too well because while Coral Sensor was eating the pudding, he already detected the bomb while he was there. Because he didn't just eat the pudding. He ate most of it, like, on the top of the surface. And then he went underground. And he noticed something was up. Like, oh, it's a bomb. Yeah, just like throws it, and then he just like fucking eats like not the whole thing, but he said he wanted to save the rest of it for later. But then he already figured it out, so it was a nice thing that Koro Sensei and um the green hair girl I forget his uh well, I forget her name, which is the one again character names I only know certain ones because there's like a whole bunch of students in class E, so I don't know every single character. I basically know like Nagisa, uh, Karma, I know. And, you know, we, we have the other ones like uh, Mr. Karasuma, you know, you know, simple characters that go in more of the story besides just, like random students. And the fucking, um, the, the app chick, or I like to call her Siri, which is, you know, which is what I like to call her. But regardless, though, um, yeah, so that's pretty much the first half of the story. So simple, you know, comedy stuff there. Then we get to this really funny... Um, not just funny, but it's actually pretty cool. Like, a cops and robber kind of training assassination thing. Where they're playing, like, cops and robbers, and basically the students are the robbers, and Mr. Karasuma is the cop, and so is, uh, well, yeah. And then Karo Sensei is the one that's guarding all the jailers from actually escaping, even though it's technically not a jail cell. It's more just like a, a gym equipment, you know, a playground, gym equipment, stuff like that for the students. And they're there, and basically what's kind of funny is that most of the students get caught red-handed, but they play a little joke on Coral Sensei, how they bribe him, like, with certain things, like these, like, like these sassy stories, like these sappy stories, like, oh, my, my brother is, like, sick with a really bad virus or something, and he says, like, please win this games of cops in order for me, and <laughs> shit like that, just, like, make Coral Sensei just let some of the prisoners go, and it's, the last thing was, like, a porn magazine, Thing. And I thought that was pretty fucking funny, like how like porn was the essence. And the mission pretty much failed, and the students win because Koro Sensei was being Koro Sensei. You know, let's be honest. Like he's not just like a top of the line, super OP, ridiculous strong alien. Like he's got like you know feelings and emotions and stuff like that. So that's obvious. So that's pretty much that. And then finally, the second half of the episode, pretty much uh, Koro Sensei is being framed by. Some, you know, kind of sexual... Well, I kind of forget. Oh, right, right, right. Apparently, he was stealing uh, brawls from, like, all these women who, like, have their brawls hanging out when they're, like, basically putting them to dry and shit like that, like, on the hangers and crap. And pretty much, he's been framed by this ridiculous tentacle pervert, and then all the students didn't really trust him. But then they decided to actually give him the cold shoulder, and it kind of hurt Coral Sensei's feelings, which is like, damn... 
that really does kind of suck because, you know, hey, he may be a little pervy sometimes, but hey, like I said, aren't we all in the way? Like, I'm just saying. So, you know, it doesn't really matter. You know, Carl Sensei just, you know, he just wants some titties. You know, yeah, I mean, it, it does leave a bad reputation because, well, let's be honest, besides him being a major threat, he is a professional school teacher. So, it's obvious that it will lead a bad reputation for your students. But whatever, though, you know, that's a little under the line belt. Like, the, the fucking students are, like, nosy as hell, man. If it were me, like, I would keep that shit on the lowdown. Like, honestly, Carl Sensei, I mean, I thought you were better stuff in that like come on dude like dead ass like she if it were me i would have been a much more stealthy than that she i mean honestly like 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 <laughs> i swear to god man like there's this one scene too where he's looking through the window like he's about to rape a bitch like i'm not even joking like he's like right there he's stalking her and shit while she's like doing something to her hair or where the fuck this uh, chick is doing and basically you know when that happens we see like this like dark image thinking that something happened like you know he was like sexually harassing her or some shit like tentacle you, like I said I've seen I've seen enough head tied to where this is going so it's like it's pretty obvious there so excuse me so some of the students actually can also finally realize that wait a minute maybe it's not Kuro Sensei it's someone that's framing him so then they get some of the students like Nagisa and you know um the dude that got like left back and shit you know him and that other girl, the one that's investigating, and of course, the one I like to call Siri, which, you know, is basically, or Siri, you know, the conversation thing on your app phone. That's that's why I think of her anyways, that, except kind of more sexier, because it's an actual female you can actually see. I'm just saying. Anyway, so, what happens is, is that, you know, they finally find out, like, while they're watching on patrol, that Kuro Sensei is, because they thought, wait a minute, he looks like... He looks way too much like the suspect here. Like, he, like the getup he was wearing was like a robber outfit or whatever. Like, a stealth, sly, cooper kind of outfit. Like, no. Like, that isn't really the way to go when you're actually on patrol, dude. But anyways, we see that the real culprit that's sort of dressed up on him like in a helmet and shit is none other than, uh, you. Ugh. Then we had motherfucking Shiro. Yo! Yeah, Shiro! Like, I'm like, yo! Fucking, I saw the cloak, and I'm like, oh, fuck, it's this dude again. Oh, no! Fucking Shiro! And then we see him at the end, he's coming out. And the, well, he comes out, and he's like, Koro Sensei. It's like, it doesn't matter. You're not equal to me. Like, the way he was, like, posed up and shit. Like, he was ready to fight him. And then the end credits. Like, fuck you, man. Like, damn it. I really wanted to see, like, a really cool fight between the two. Like, for the first season, they had a really, a really awesome, a really cool, awesome fight. The thing was, yeah, you could agree there was some comedy that was added to the fight. But then they actually had some serious cool shit. Like, that dude, Shiro. Yo! The fucking hair, man! Like the oh my god, the 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 Kalulu um whatever the fuck or whatever the fuck Kalulu the fucking dude from Monarch Hunter, Hunter. Um, even though I don't really watch the series, I know that character is. But fucking tentacle, like fucking Medusa looking there. Oh that motherfucker! Like oh my god! Like yes, let's go! Like that was actually pretty hyped, though. I'm not gonna lie, but the ending it was only like a quick second. So yeah, but overall though. Um, good, good plus episode. Uh, it was good. Four out of five rating. I, yeah, it's still a good episode. It was still good. The comedy factor was still pretty much there. I kind of laughed my ass off in certain scenes. Even though I think the comedy was a bit more funnier in the last episode, especially with the references they used, like Attack on Titan, etc. I think those were a bit more comedic, at least to me. But, you know, there were still some, you know, some funny jokes, some funny comedy in this episode, too, so I can't complain. So, overall, yeah, it was a really well-balanced episode. Didn't feel too slow, didn't feel too fast. It was perfectly well-balanced. So, a 4 out of 5 episode. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below of this week's episode of Assassination Classroom. Second season, episode two. Uh, join me next time, uh, next week, for episode three. And until then, guys, this is the Ninja Reviewer signing out. Peace out. And manga fans, keep supporting what you really want to watch. And that's basically it. I'll catch you guys later. Have a good evening. Peace.